So to start off slowly so that we get to pick up the pace, I'd like to invite to the stage Rich Armstrong. You've probably seen him around creating his art and putting them amongst the wall. I'd like to add, invite him to the stage to design some NFTs for you. And then if you'd like, he can also answer some questions about his creative process. Enjoy. Hi guys, hi. I just want to ask Gabby something. If somebody has a question, how do they come and ask me? Should I just come up? Hey? Okay. So yeah, if you have any questions, just come ask afterwards. If you really want to know, you can come up and ask me here. But yeah, I'm going to be creating an NFT. I'm using a, an app called Procreate, which is amazing. And it normally takes me around one to four hours to create an NFT, see what I can do in 35 minutes. There was meant to be a presentation about UX design. UX design is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna do some sketching to start off. Let's just double see, double check that this works. Fantastic. So I have a friend who's doing a 3D interactive realm and there's gonna be pieces of art in it. So I wanna create a piece of art for his interactive 3D realm. It's meant to be two and a half meters by two and a half meters, but that's really big. So I'm just creating this, which is 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. All right, so kind of in my mind, I wanna create something that's kind of like otherworldly, maybe have some kind of a tree and this tree might have a flower. And I'm sketching in, in blue. Blue's really nice to sketch in. Doesn't like conflict with the black lines that I'll be using afterwards. And something like this flower and the leaves, customary in the, the art that I create, is a bunch of eyes. So eye leaves, sometimes they open up as well and they have a little bit of gold fruit in them. We'll get to the gold in just a minute. So there we go, some nice little planning with these eyes as leaves. And then there could also be an eye here. Maybe this is a little bit smaller. All right. It's always nice that we can change things as we go because digital is amazing like that. And it also dries really quickly. My paint in my stand or my booth is currently still wet, which I didn't expect it to be 12 hours later. So my wife is bringing a hairdryer so I can uh, dry the paint and then paint on top of it. Because today's the last day, I can't just leave it up here in the Beers van Berlage. It also got auctioned off yesterday. So it's gonna head to the, the auction winner and his office today. Okay, so this is a nice little flower. Maybe I can rotate it just a little bit. And out of the flower comes a beak. Because you know, flowers and birds, why not? This is very typical of the Doodleverse and the kind of stuff that I do uh, in the NFT world. And the tongue is a worm which is kind of weird, right? Because birds normally eat worms and we have tongues that help us eat things. But right now, we're gonna do some drawing and go for a black color, change my brush a little bit to this brush called Doodle Jiggly Lands. Okay, let's get this going. So this app that I'm using, Procreate, it's flippin' amazing. They've also released a, a new app, or gonna be releasing a new app for animation. So the fact that you can draw on your iPad, you know, when you're on the train, on the couch, wow, it's just amazing. And Undo, guys, Undo is really cool. But it's uh, pretty cool when you're able to do some digital drawing and some physical painting. It's just like totally different ways of creating. I love analog ways of creating. I love getting messy, but
but you know, being able to take this wherever, on an airplane, in a train, on a couch, you know, to a cafe, it's powerful, it's awesome. And it's really easy to make this into an NFT. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer. I don't think you can see it up here on the screen, but then I can do some of these worm lines. And it just means that when I get to filling this tongue later on, I won't need to fill each segment. I can just fill the entire tongue. Okay. Here we go. Put the eye in there. And this thing you know, below the eye, I call it an eye bag. I don't actually know what it is called. But we'll call it an eye bag for now. Okay. I'm not gonna put uh, these eyelashes in because what I will do is create another layer and create all of the petals for this flower. And again, I'm creating this on a new layer so that when I do fill, it, uh, it doesn't take forever to fill each of these little petals or flower segments. Okay. So the session that was meant to be on instead of this was a UX session. I used to be a UX designer and about, say a year ago, well actually say five years ago, I stopped being a UX designer. Um, I started teaching people how to create, how to do more of this kind of stuff, how to lean into being a creative human being. I believe all humans are creative. And then, yeah, at the beginning of last year, I, I lent hard into doing this kind of stuff. This is me being authentic. As a kid, this is what I did all the time. Even in school, I was drawing, doodling, whether it was actually an art class or geography class or math class, like I was doodling in the margins. If I finished early, I'd be drawing. I wanted to start a t-shirt brand as a kid. It was gonna be called Funk ZN which if, um, if you're from where I was from in South Africa, it might make sense. I was very inspired by the surf brands at the time. And then when I was 18, 19, I started a little brand where I was making button badges and things like that, selling them at uh, stores. And then after a while, I started a stationary brand selling greeting cards. And yeah, when we moved to Amsterdam, that all stopped and I, you know, started doing more and more UX design. We opened our product design agency and then a few months later, the teaching really took off. Okay. I'm gonna create a new layer here just in case I wanna change a few things. And we'll create the, the neck of this plant. And I'll probably make it a tiger plant because tigers are rad. They're really cool. Or a zebra. Just makes the plant a little bit more interesting. Okay. So I've had some really good conversations with people here at uh, Congress. It's my first Congress. Hope I'm invited to the next one. And it's been super cool chatting to people who aren't in the art industry, aren't in you know, the NFT crypto industry, aren't in the creative industry. A lot of people have asked me why I'm here. <laughs> what do I want to achieve? It's been like, uh, uh, you don't really fit into you know, market research, do you? You can see some puzzled faces as they walk past, like, how do I engage with this person? What is he doing? So 
had some really good conversations about creativity, about innovation. And it's been, yeah, really, really cool. Okay, now I'm going to do the first leaf, which is an eye leaf. I would love to see this like in IMAX or something. Leaves that are eyes. Man, sometimes I can't draw straight lines very well. Sometimes it's great. Curved lines are my worst, or circles. It's like, wow, how do I actually draw a circle? It's a little bit easier in real life on paper, I find. Okay. Other times I just do really well, like that was a pretty good circle. And you think that I get better, or I should get better at it, the longer I do it. But from my experience, it hasn't been the case. Okay, this one's going to be a leaf that's open, and it's going to have teeth. But it's still going to be an eye. Kind of looks weird, but that's okay. One of the things I like about my work is that it's meant to be dreamlike. So if things don't look real or plausible, like that's completely the point. And with it being a dream, it means that things don't have to match my previous illustration, my previous doodle, my previous drawing. It's like a dream. It can just be something weird, something wonderful. Sometimes you have recurring dreams. Sometimes you have a series of recurring dreams. Sometimes you have the same like content, but something else is altered. So that's the approach I like to take to my drawing, my doodling, is some things can change, some things can stay the same, some things can change for a day and then revert back to what they were before. It's completely fluid and flexible, much like a dream. Okay, and inside of this plant, or this leaf, there's a bunch of gold. Maybe like gold coins, a gold chocolate, something like that. Looks a little bit complicated right now. Okay, so we've got this bird. We can close or hide the, the blue reference layer. There we go. And then I want to put something over here. So a lot of the time I deal with like two different dimensions or a cosmic realm. So yeah, we could try something like that. Or we could put some of these birds in place and they could be flying. One over there, one over here. Maybe another one up here. Something like that. And maybe they're flying into a new realm over here. These birds all have beaks, actually. So on the first day, I gave a, a talk about magicians and cheats and how technology is just, it's magic. And often when I'm streaming, I'm just amazed by what's actually happening. Like, I have this little cable. It's going to some computer over there, which is projecting it up here. The fact that I'm speaking into microphone you guys are hearing in your ears on Bluetooth headphones. It's just, it's mental. I don't know how it all works, but it is amazing. And when I'm doing it on Twitch or YouTube, it's like I'm streaming to people around the world. And I kind of know how my camera setup works at my studio. But man, it is, it's crazy what's possible. And then this iPad, I'm basically pressing on glass, but somehow like digital ink is being spread as I'm painting. 
These guys are clever. And it allows me to be an artist. It allows me to tell stories. It allows me to be creative. And yeah, I've had some people cry when they've watched me doodle and draw on a live stream. A lot of people love what I do, not because it's you know, super artistic or technically good, but it reminds them of being a kid when they were six, seven, maybe even 16, you know, trying to do stuff that made them happy, trying to have fun. Sometimes they had big dreams of becoming astronauts or doctors or, you know, starting their own clothing brand. And then being an adult just kind of sucked that all out of them. And so people like to remember what it was like to have dreams and to be a kid and to think anything was possible. Okay, so we've got a bird. And birds are cool. This bird's going to be behind the plant. And you can see my shapes are pretty similar, like the shape of the, the plant and the shape of the birds. They could actually be plants or birds until I fill in like the details. I do like to think that I keep things simple. I'm not trying to draw realistic birds. Maybe I'll just leave that wing out. Just trying to draw stuff, make it seem like it's a thing, like a bird or a plant, and then bend the rules a little bit. So plants are, are eyes, or the plants have eyes. There's worm tongues. Make it seem a little bit trippy. And a lot of people ask me if I take drugs, you know, to get inspired. I don't. I just have a really vivid imagination. I've been ADHD or, or ADD from when I was a kid, which means that instead of like jumping up and down and like kicking a ball and stuff, I'd just be sitting there and everyone would think, oh, this guy's so calm. He's so well behaved. But my mind was somewhere totally different. I'd be thinking about what I was reading, what I wanted to do that day. Now, I have conversations with people and sometimes I get distracted while I'm having a conversation, which is not great because it means that I have to kind of excuse myself because I can't remember what they've been talking about. And it means that I can't ask them anything because they may have just been talking about it. So it's kind of embarrassing at times. But other times I'm hyper-focused on what people are saying. Ah, oh, can give this guy a little tongue as well, a worm tongue. There we go. And this guy. Rub out his little, I don't know what that is, in a beak, a bull, a little nose hole, something like that. And they'll put an eye over here with the eye bag and the eyelashes. I really hope I'm on the right layer. Sometimes I need to like erase and redo stuff. It's a little bit irritating. But not this time, not right now anyway. Let's do a little bit of erasing here. And this is what's powerful about digital work is that you can basically use a bunch of layers and draw on top of other layers and then rub it out just like that. It is super powerful. I guess I can do a lot more erasing here. Do -do -do. Okay. Things are coming along. Sometimes I raise too much, I need to put some back. Okay.
three birds. I want to put in some of these crest feathers on these birds here. There we go. And then finally, well not finally, finally, but let's put in these lines for a new dimension. And these will actually go underneath everything. So I'm going to hide it for now. Boop. Hide this other planning layer. And on this layer, do a bunch of lines for these tongues. Which are worms. And I need to just change something on the overlap of one of the birds and the rose or the, the plant, the flower, which is over here, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to merge a bunch of these. Merge down, merge down set this as a reference layer, which means it's super easy to then color this. Okay, let's do it. There we go. Create a new layer for most colors that I use. I don't know why it says, there we go, it's back. It's back. Do not fear. Okay. And we'll fill these fantastic. And then I'll make this one a pinky color. And I'll do some gradienting in a moment. We'll make all of the beaks yellow. There we go. And the birds, they can be blue. I also need to give the birds some feathers in their wings, which I normally do. I'll add some red to the, the crest feathers. It's pretty typical. Pink to the, the eye bags. Maybe it's because, you know, old people have eye bags or people who haven't slept for a while have eye bags. Maybe that's why I don't really know what an eye bag is officially. Okay. I'll add some black for the pupils. Those won't be black, will they? No, I don't think so. Okay. White, white, white. Put the whites in here. And then we'll put some pink in these eyeballs, just to make it a little bit different. And then the tongues can start off as a peach color. And the teeth can be a white color. And you see how long this takes to fill in like individual segments long time. Let's put this in here. Okay, then I think that this big bird over here also needs some teeth. So, crate on top here. Well, he's kind of like a bird flower, right? Okay, and then we can do some erasing here. Yeah, I think that's good. Some erasing here. Okay, and we can just put some lines back. And that looks good. Maybe we can fill these up again. Nope.
Okay, I'm going to merge that down. That's why it was filling all over the show. No, just want to draw here. Okay, here we go. The teeth are being filled in. Okay. And then we can put a little bit of blue in over here, I reckon. So the blue and pinks match throughout the piece. And then we've got this one. So I'll set that layer as a reference and then do a little bit of coloring here. Add some purple, add some pink. Okay, that looks good. Then I need to choose the colors of the left and the right realms. Um, hmm. All right, let's put in a little bit of blue here. Fantastic. And then we need to fill in the gold bits. So I'm going to set this layer as a reference and put in the gold bits over here. He's got gold inside his mouth. Okay, and then the background color can be black, which gives it a really nice contrast. It just means that the legs of the birds can't be seen. Problematic. So let's uh, change a few things here. We'll just cut these out. Doop. Like so. And then cut and paste. Then we will invert them so they become white. There we go. Put our background on. And there we go, we have white legs. Okay. And I'm gonna alpha lock this layer and do some shading, some gradienting, which is a very fun part of the process. where a lot of the life of a piece comes in and uh, I think I've got like four four or five more minutes left so if I don't finish this piece you can check it out later on Twitter it's where I post most of my NFT kind of stuff okay it's starting to, to take shape now I like it Maybe a little bit of yellow up here too. So if you've had a look at my store or my stall, my booth, you'll notice that the style that I'm using is very, very different. That's because to do gradients like this in real life, whew, it would take a lot of time. And my paint is still drying from yesterday. So it would have to be a, a long kind of thing. Okay, let's put some red in here as well. Fantastic, a little bit of this peachy color. Yeah, that's looking good. Doing this little tiger stripe, making that look good. Maybe a little bit at the top here. Fantastic. Okay, these birds. Still got to do the feathers for them. Give us a really nice gradient to look for these birdies. The one-eyed birds. Okay.
Just doing the eye bags now, giving them a little bit of gradient. Okay. And what is that? Oh, that's the gold. Okay, beaks. Let's uh, work on some of the beaks here. Yeah, it's looking good. And see how slowly this thing starts to come to life. Might add a little bit of light blue onto the birds here. Okay. Super, super. I'm gonna work on the sky a little bit. A little bit of pink into the sky too. Gives this really nice like, I don't know, dawn or dusk kind of a feeling. And uh, I have like 20 seconds left, so if I need to get off the stage, please let me know I should get off the stage. I should get off the stage. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great last day of conference. Come stop by my booth, come chat, and thank you. Thank you, Rich. That was amazing. Beautiful colors. Quick question, NFTs. Yes. You just designed this. So what happens next? So once I finish this, I'll then mint it. So I'll export it as a JPEG or a PNG. You can also use movie files, HTML files, any kind of file almost. I will then mint it, which on my blockchain costs like 0.05 cents. I have paid up to 150 euros to mint something before, mm -hmm. which sounds like a lot of money. It was a lot of money. And then once I've done that, you'll be able to access it on any kind of marketplace. So on my blockchain, there are three or four marketplaces that you can then check it out at. I can then list it or I can send it to somebody else and they become okay. the owner. If I list it, that's like selling it. And if somebody wants to buy it or bid on it, they can then do that later. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, thank you so much. Like he said, he's not going anywhere yet. <laughs> His tent is right over at the Power Up Pavilion. If you want to meet with him, please go ahead and do so. As you can see, he's a very welcoming guy. Thank you, Rich. <laughs>